Now in the previous video I spoke about a thing that I wanted to test, which I referred to as simply the thing. Well, this is the thing. It's a Ferguson Mini Lion Tamer. Some sort of a power line conditioner thingy. So, you plug that into your, into your mains and run appliances from these two power points here. It can only do 275 VA, which is you know, a quarter of a kilowatt and something this size, which weighs 20 kilograms, uh, or actually 25 kilograms, you think might do a bit more power than that. But anyway, I strongly suspect that this thing contains a ferro-resonant transformer, and my research indicates that ferro-resonant transformers come in two flavours. Relatively simple, and complex and weird. This one, I have reason to believe, comes under the complex and weird category. So before looking at that, I thought we should look at trying to get an understanding of ferro-resonant transformers, the basics thereof. And it would be best to start with something like this, which comes under the relatively simple category. We'll have a closer look at him first and we'll worry about the lion tamer in a later video. So, yes, th this is one of three ferro-resonant transformer assemblies that came out of an IBM 4341 mainframe CPU uh, built in 1980. Now, IBM did not muck around. Look, look at this input cable. This is, that's an 8-amp fuse. Even the fuse I don't muck around with. Big HRC fuse. 8 amps that blows that so looking at the 75% rule they're probably normally only expecting 6 amps to be going through this power cable but you know, it could be up to 8 if, if that blows and looking at this this is this is a 10 amp power cable compare it to that thing they do not muck around this has got a screen and an earth and mains are active and neutral so the screen and the earth go to the frame the active presumably goes via the fuse to the input terminal strip to the transformer and the neutral goes to the other end but, but look at these wires <laughs> compared, compared to these guys you know, this is 10 amp this is only got to take 8 look at it and, and look at the secondary windings <laughs> they're, uh, they're monsters too so still probably uh, way over engineered just like this is what's different about this well typical of IBM they have uh, transformers with multiple input tappings so you can uh, set it to the appropriate local mains voltage I don't know if this goes down to 120 or if all those tappings are around the 220, 240, 260 volt range. But uh, you know, the lowest one might be 120. We'll find out by probing it later. So the input from these massive wires, screen and earth to the chassis, right on the transformer. Uh, and the primary is this top winding here. And the secondary, it looks like it's got three windings, three separate windings of very high current there and this is you know this is all spotted in something that makes it rock hard this, this is a, a no crap transformer now what makes it different to a, an ordinary transformer well this capacitor down here that capacitor has got its own secondary winding that's in, in parallel with and those two, the capacitor and that winding, form a resonance circuit which is tuned to the 50 hertz mains. Now I don't claim to know all about how ferro-resonant transformers work because to me it does seem like a bit of a black art and I was heartened to see one article that I was in my research that said that explaining them is very difficult and some engineers find the best way to think about them is magic. But they, they do seem to have a few characteristics in common. 
So let's have a look at a few diagrams courtesy of IBM. Primary and secondary are usually separate and the connection, the magnetic connection between those two parts of the mag magnetic circuit is lossy, uh, caused by a magnetic shunt, a lump of steel in between, and <clears throat> air gaps. Another feature of, is that there's a secondary winding with a capacitor across it, such as here where we have a winding by itself with three capacitors in parallel with it. All ferroresonant transformers have that, but sometimes the winding is standalone like that, and sometimes it's like this where the winding is also part of the secondary providing output current. But the voltage developed across there is quite high. In fact, the, the one in that IBM transformer there is a 550 volt capacitor, so <clears throat> the voltages can get quite high. So typically, when there's a secondary taken off that, it's, it's a tapping at a lower voltage, as shown there. The schematic symbol for ferroresonant transformers usually includes something like these lines here, between the primary and the secondary, which presumably indicates the shunt and the air gaps. So the way they operate, as I understand it, is this section of the core around the secondary can be saturated with magnetic flux. So once the primary induces a sufficient flux, increasing the current through the primary, although that will increase the flux in the primary, that won't make it into the secondary. So the voltage coming out of the secondary won't increase. And if, if the nominal load on the secondary keeps it in that saturated zone, then not only a, a surge, but also a sag in the input power, the voltage, will not change the output voltage. Now as to the capacitor, something you've seen say it's simply there to remove harmonics because when this core is saturated, uh, you won't get a nice sine wave anymore, you get a, a square wave, much more like a square wave, which will have harmonics and the coil and capacitor help to absorb those. Other things say that the uh, tank circuit receives energy from the primary and that is what gets transferred to the secondary maybe that's more more in this case here uh, and that as, as the load draws more current and needs more energy the phase angle between the primary and secondary voltages shifts causing more energy to be transferred into the tank as I say this is a black art Another feature of them is that this lossy connection, this shunt thing here is unable to allow a complete connection, magnetic connection between primary and secondary, so that it can reach the point where if the load on the output is too high, then the primary cannot get enough energy across, and therefore th these things have got a built-in current limiter, so they're hard to burn out because, yeah, a heavy current will flow, but only to a point where the primary can supply no more current to it, so you won't get a increase in primary current beyond a point. I'll try and show those things on the oscilloscope. With an 8 amp fuse, so your normal rule of thumb is you have it such that normal current is 75% of that, so if this is normally drawing 6 amps at 250 volts, what's that? That's 1500 watts. Then I'll have to measure the voltage on this, but you know, if, if, this was, if this was below 10 um, volts, which I'm pretty sure it would be, uh, we're looking at you know, at least 150 amps rating down there, oh, yeah. 50 per winding. There's also another winding on the secondary, which goes only to that connector. That's uh, just some sort of sense winding to, I don't know, monitor the voltage on it or check that the power's, power's been applied to this assembly. Typical of IBM, everything is checked, double checked. Which yeah, makes sense. They're, they're selling this stuff for millions of dollars. It's got to be dead reliable. It's got to be easy, easily fixed with minimum downtime. So they didn't skimp on anything. Now, although this is the simple form of ferroresonant transformer, it's a 
it's certainly worth a video in its own right I think and so we'll be running this off the variate it should be interesting to see some of the waveforms at different voltages and load currents to help with that I've just knocked up a little divider circuit around the outside I've got a divide by 10 divider and a, also a 0.1 ohm uh, current sense resistor so j j just to develop a little bit of voltage that we can see the current waveforms on the oscilloscope as well so I've just got this very short mains power cord secured it in the, in the clamp there and soldered the earth on and joined the active and neutral to the appropriate wires there and I'm going to run that through the Variac and let's first of all just measure some voltages over here and see what's happening at the Variac and whatever I stick these into so first of all power on everything and apparently that's one of the features of ferroresonant transformers they're noisy there's only 50 volts going in and listen to the hum and it's drawing 1.7 amps with no load another feature of ferroresonant transformers but let's just back it off a bit and have a look at a couple of voltages first so first of all I forgot that this thing starts off in DC mode rather than volts AC so I'm probing around looking for something that wasn't there and also I should have done a few resistance checks first just to see what's going on with these and it seems that these are these each of these three wires is two completely separate windings and from the voltages which we'll see in a second it looks like this is center tap okay let's put the volts up to normal operating voltage 250 volts or 240 let's make it 250 because that's what the input power currently is right here and notice it's drawing less current 250 volts it's drawing 2 amps There's a sweet spot at drawing more than two amps at the low voltage at 50. Look at this peak 2.9 amps. Two point nine amps at 35 volts. And if we wind it up, there's a sweet spot. dropping now 140 1.4 1.3 1.1 1 amp still going down So that's going up when that noise kicks in. About 0.4 at 200 and uh, we can go even lower. At 200 volts it's about 0.3 of an amp so yeah, there's a sweet spot there. 30 volts is a maximum, 200 volts is a minimum and then once we go past so the current's going up a lot once we get to 240 ish. Well, let's put it. Let's. What should I? What should I assume? 240 volts is supposed to be the nominal it was back in the 80s when this thing was installed. Just for interest, what's coming out of the? Well, that actually that pond four might not be a winding. It might be um, a thermal switch or something inside the transformer to indicate when it's getting too bloody hot. There's no voltage there, it must be a switch or a thermistor or something. In summary, we're getting 21.6 volts center tapped there and 15.3 volts center tapped here. That's with no load. Uh, but at those currents, that with uh, 6 amps mains 
roughly one and a half kilowatts going through this transformer that translates into 40 or 50 amps coming out of each of those windings which is pretty buffy anyway I'll come back to this tomorrow because right now I'm going to go down the pub and place a bet on the race that stops the nation and have a beer catch you later